Chapter 10. Let us open the casket. You are all here now, Uncle Henrik said, looking around the living room. I must go. Anne Marie stood in the wide doorway, looking in from the hall. The baby slept now, and its mother looked tired. Her husband sat beside her, his arm across her shoulders. The old man's head was still bent. Peter sat alone, leaning forward with his elbows on his knees. It was clear that he was deep in thought. On the sofa, Ellen sat between her parents, one hand clasped tightly in her mother's. She looked up at Anne Marie, but didn't smile. Anne Marie felt a surge of sadness. The bond of their friendship had not broken, but it was as if Ellen had moved now into a new world. The world of her own family and whatever lay ahead for them. The elderly bearded man looked up suddenly as Uncle Henrik prepared to go. God keep you safe, he said in a firm but quiet voice. Henrik nodded. God keep us all safe, he replied. Then he turned and left the room. A moment later, Anne Marie heard him leave the house. Mama brought the teapot from the kitchen and a tray of cups. Anne Marie helped her pass the cups around. No one spoke. Anne Marie, Mama whispered to her in the hall, you may go to bed if you want to. It is very late. Anne Marie shook her head, but she was tired. She could see that Ellen was too. Her friend's head was leaning on her mother's shoulder and her eyes closed now and then. Finally, Anne Marie went to the empty rocking chair in the corner of the living room and curled there with her head against its soft padded back. She dozed. She was startled from her half sleep by the sudden sweep of headlights through the sheer curtains and across the room. As a car pulled up outside, the car door slammed. Everyone in the room tensed, but no one spoke. She heard, as if in a recurring nightmare, the pounding on the door and the heavy, frightening, familiar staccato of boots on the kitchen floor. The woman with the baby gasped and began suddenly to weep. The male, accented voice from the kitchen was loud. We have observed, he said, that an unusual number of people have gathered at this house tonight. What is the explanation? There has been a death, Mama's voice replied calmly. It is always our custom to gather and pay our respects when a family member dies. I am sure you are familiar with our customs. One of the officers pushed Mama ahead of him him from the kitchen and entered the living room. There were others behind him. They filled the wide doorway. As always, their boots gleamed, their guns, their helmets, all of them gleamed in the candlelight. Amory watched as the man's eyes moved around the room. He looked for a long time at the casket. Then he moved his gaze, focusing on each person in turn. When his eyes reached her, he looked back at him. she looked back at him steadily. Who died? He asked harshly. No one answered. They watched Anne Marie and she realized that the officer was directing the question at her. Now she knew for certain what Uncle Henrik had meant when he had talked to her in the barn. To be brave came more easily if you knew nothing. She swallowed. My great aunt Bertie, she lied in a firm voice. The officer moved forward suddenly across the room to the casket. He placed one gloved hand on its lid. Poor great aunt Bertie, he said in a condescending voice. I do know your customs he said, turning his gaze toward Mama, who stood still in the doorway. And I know it is custom to pay one's respects by looking your loved one in the face. It seems odd to me that you have closed this coffin up so tightly. His hand was in a fist and he rubbed it across the edge of the polished lid. Why is it not open? He demanded. Let us open it up and take one last look at Great Aunt Bertie. Anne Marie saw Peter across the room stiffen in his chair, lift his chin and reach slowly with one hand toward his side. Mama walked quickly to across the room, directly to the casket, directly to the officer. You're right, she said. The doctor said it should be closed because great aunt Bertie died of typhus. And he said that there was a chance the germs would still be there, would still be dangerous. But what does he know? Only a country doctor and an old man at that. Surely typhus germs wouldn't linger in a dead person. And dear aunt Bertie, I've been longing to see her face, to kiss her goodbye. Of course we will open the casket. I am glad you suggested. With a swift motion, the off Nazi officer slapped Mama across her face. She staggered backward and a white mark on her cheek darkened. You foolish woman, he spat, to think that we have any interest in seeing the body of your deceased aunt. Open it after we leave, he said. With one gloved thumb, he pressed a candle flame into darkness. The hot wax spattered on the table. Put all these candles out, he said, or pull the curtains. Then he strode to the doorway and left the room. Motionless, silent, one hand to her cheek, Mama listened. They all listened as the uniformed men left the house. 
In a moment, they heard the car doors, the sound of its engine, and finally they heard it drive away. Mama, cried Anne Marie. Her mama shook her head quickly and glanced at the open window covered only by the sheer curtain. Anne Marie understood. There might still be soldiers outside, watching, listening. Peter stood and drew the dark curtains across the windows. He relit the extinguished candle. Then he reached for the old Bible that had always been there on the mantel. He opened it quickly and said, I will read a psalm. His eyes turned to the page he had opened at random and he began to read in a strong voice. Oh, praise the Lord. How good it is to sing psalms to our God. How pleasant to praise him. The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem. He gathers and scattered sons of Israel. It is he who heals broken in spirit and binds up their wounds. He who numbers the stars one by one. Mama sat down and listened. Gradually, they each began to relax. Anne Marie could see the old man across the room moving his lips as Peter read. He knew the ancient psalm by heart. Anne Marie didn't. The words were unfamiliar to her and she tried to listen, tried to understand, tried to forget the war and the Nazis, tried not to cry, tried to be brave. The night breeze moved the dark curtains at the open windows. Outside, she knew the sky was speckled with stars. How could anyone number them one by one, as the psalm said? There were too many. The sky was too big. Ellen had said that her mother was frightened of the ocean, that it was too cold and too big. The sky was too, thought Anne Marie. The whole world was too cold, too big, and too cruel. Peter read on in his firm voice, though it was clear he was tired. The long minutes passed. They seemed like hours. Finally, still reading, he moved quietly to the window. He closed the Bible and listened to the quiet night. Then he looked around the room. Now, he said, it is time. First, he closed the windows. Then he went to the casket and opened the lid.